The Labour Party has won the UK general election, promising to make massive changes to the UK economy and spur lots of growth. It's been met with huge amounts of scepticism on Twitter, amongst other places. But as far as tech and innovation go, this really is great news for the UK. So here are my four big reasons to be optimistic about British tech and innovation over the next five years. Number one, GB Energy and the Renewable Revolution. The new Labour government plans to invest £8.3 billion in a publicly owned green power company. GB Energy won't supply electricity directly to households, but it's going to co-invest with the private sector in emerging technologies like green hydrogen, floating offshore wind farms and tidal power. They also plan to scale up investment in nuclear, onshore wind and solar power. Now, according to The Economist, solar power is right on the verge of an inflection point. It's about to become the world's single biggest source of electricity by the 2030s and potentially the biggest source of energy overall by the 2040s, doubling installed capacity every three years. This is happening because increasing demand is now driving down costs, which is then in turn increasing demand again. And unlike fossil fuels, there are no constraints like expensive drilling platforms and diminishing returns with renewables. Nobody really knows when this cycle is going to stop. This exponential growth means we could see 10 times the solar power within a decade. Then you have the North Sea, which is one of the best places in the whole world for offshore wind energy. Advancements in battery technology will hopefully bolster this revolution. So it might be more by luck than judgment that the Labour government is coming in just as renewable energy is about to become very viable and very cheap. But if they execute well and ride this new wave of innovation, then there's every chance that they could become the global renewable energy superpower that they hope to be. Now, of course, there are haters and skeptics who are saying constantly that fossil fuels are really still the only viable form of energy. But in my view, they are making the same mistakes that have been made over and over again throughout history when it comes to groundbreaking technology. In 1903, the New York Times famously predicted that it would take 10 million years for humans to fly. Now, of course, we fly around the world every day. The same naysayers doubted the internet and electric cars. Today, they're doubting the power of AI and of course, of renewable energy. History shows us that innovation moves much faster than anybody expects when the right incentives are aligned. That point is now. Reason two, reforming planning and defeating NIMBYism. Labour have already rolled out a whole host of planning reforms and it could be a real game changer for them. The current Tory government's resistance to essential developments like data centres, mostly due to concerns from their safe seat constituencies, has really been holding Britain back. The refusal of the IVA data centre project for spoiling views over a motorway is a real and frankly insane example of this. As I say, Labour has already started removing barriers to development within just a week of taking power, including revoking the ban on onshore wind development. This will pave the way for more data centers, more infrastructure projects, and really support the tech industry by providing the necessary digital backbone for growth and innovation. More data center means better data processing and a stronger tech ecosystem. Reason three is science and R&D. Labour's appointment of Sir Patrick Valance to a cabinet position signals a real serious commitment to boosting UK R&D. Valance is a former chief scientific advisor to the government and was president of research and development at GlaxoSmithKline, the massive pharmaceutical company. He's got a great track record in biotech research and innovation. At the moment, UK R&D spending lags behind leaders like Israel, South Korea and the USA, who all invest much more as a proportion of their GDP and see the returns on that because they're growing much faster than Britain is. And the UK's university sector should be a goldmine for innovation. By combining this academic strength with increased funding for labs and data centers, and of course the planning reforms we've already talked about to build these things around Oxford, Cambridge, and London, we really could be supercharging tech and biotech in Britain. Reason four, 
Finally is, of course, the AI revolution. Former Labour Prime Minister Tony Blair has recently been reinforcing the fact that embracing new AI development is critical for Britain's future. At the moment, Britain ranks third globally for AI behind just the USA and China. So it's a real opportunity and a vital area for growth. AI can revolutionise sectors from healthcare to education, and AI-driven healthcare can shift the focus to prevention, cutting costs and improving outcomes. For instance, AI applications can reduce long-term sickness and disability benefits, enhancing productivity. In education, AI can provide personalised learning, helping teachers and students achieve more with less effort. The potential savings from AI adoption run into the tens of billions, which could provide a massive boost to the UK economy. Labour's focus on AI shouldn't just be about technology, it should be about transforming the entire economy with these productivity gains that the tech can bring. By harnessing the power of AI, Labour can address Britain's famous productivity challenges and really start to push the needle on growth. Now, of course, there's a lot to do. It's very early days, and I'm sure the Labour government will not get everything right. The challenges that the UK faces are indeed huge, but they have a unique opportunity right now. We're at an inflection point with renewables. We're at an inflection point with AI. And all of the ingredients are there for Britain to become a real hub of global innovation. If they can get the planning right and if they can drive investment in the right ways, then there's every chance that they can succeed in this mission. Now, if you're still watching this video, that means you are one of the most engaged viewers that it has. I see this in the stats and therefore you're incredibly important to me. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you very much for sticking with me. And I hope that if you're one of the many viewers that watches several of my videos and hasn't yet subscribed, that you will consider doing so. That's it from me. I'll see you next time.